All right, y'all. How you doing? We, uh, wait, hello. <laughs> um, this is uh, Social 19. You probably know that, but maybe you don't, and maybe you're in the wrong place. Uh, but if you're supposed to be in 119, you're in the right place. So, um, yeah, you can grab. There are a lot of seats in the front. There are always seats in the front. People tend to sit in the back. So if you come in kind of right at the end, just cop down to the front. And, uh, um, <coughs> hey, so... Uh, let's, I get, yeah, let's start. So, uh, my name is Sam, uh, Sam Richards, and I'm the instructor. And uh, welcome to the, the beginning of the end of four. That's the, I always come up, we come up with these kind of obscure titles for every class. And uh, this one is probably the most obscure title we've used in a long time. And, and basically, uh, I've been teaching for since night the fall of 1984 and that's a long time it's almost four decades in fact it's one semester shy of four decades and so this is the first class of the semester shy of four decades of teaching so it's the end of my four the beginning of the semester of the last semester of my fourth decade how about that man <laughs> Dude, did I, did I do that? Does that make sense? Uh, anyway, so that's what it is. And four decades. That's a long time. Uh, hey, if you're coming in, listen, just so you know, uh, if you're coming in late, there's seats down in the front. So don't, definitely don't, you can't sit on the floor in the back. So you always got to just roll down to the front and grab a seat. That's how it works, and you de it doesn't disturb anything, just so you know that. Uh, it's, not, it's not a problem, so just come and, and find, find a spot. Are we good? All right, man. Hey, um, let's, go to the, let's go to the next slide. So, uh, first thing, um, you can't, you, you have no reason, the good news about this class is that you don't ever have to take notes. So, there's nothing that happens in this classroom that you need to memorize or return to, only if you want to, on your own time. And what that means is you never, since you, you never need a pen or a paper or a laptop or anything to write on at all. So that means uh, you got to put your laptops away. So I see laptops is still open in the back and stuff, right? Like you just put them away. And now, which is awesome. The other thing is that uh, you, we, we are gonna, we will be taking attendance. We will be taking attendance on Canvas at the beginning of class and at the end of class. And so the thing you wanna do is use your phone. So if you, even if you like to use your laptop, you wanna use your phone. And the thing that you need to do, this is really important. Probably nothing I say this entire class will be important except what I'm about to say right now. And someone's leaning up against the lights, so uh, yeah, don't lean up against the wall if you're. Hey, so here's what I here's what's important. When you come into the class, you need we're taking attendance on your phones. That means you need to connect to Wi-Fi because you got to get on Canvas. And what's going to happen is you're going to walk in the classroom and you're, everyone's going to connect to the nodes immediately right when you walk in. And they're going to get jammed up and it's going to look like you're connected, but you're not connected. So when you get to your seat, you got to take your phone out. You have to disconnect from Wi-Fi and reconnect. And then it'll be fine, okay? Because all the people that come down here, you, you don't get connected. So, uh, okay, so that's one thing. So you, we, you definitely want to use your phones for attendance because sometimes you're going to need to take a photo for attendance. And you can't do that with a laptop. So just remember to bring your phones, okay? If you don't have a phone, 
a smartphone with a camera? Dude, man, I want to meet you because you're awesome. Uh, or you're poor. I don't know which one it is. Probably, probably awesome. So uh, in which case, I want to meet you. And if you're that poor, I want to meet you too. Maybe I'll score a cell phone for you. All right. You got, there's a lot of rich people in this class, so someone will hook you up with a phone. Uh, all right, so here's the thing. Let me, let me tell you what's going to happen. It's a big class. By the way, there are some people down here who work with us. They're allowed to have laptops open, so that's a different story. Here, uh, so here's, here's what's going to happen. You're going to, the semester's going to start, and you're going to be in the back, and the human nature is to feel invisible, Kind of, and so you're just going to come in. Hey, if you're coming in late, come down around to the front. There are seats down in the front. A bunch of seats over here. There are seats here. You got to remember that if you're rolling late, especially the first couple of days, people will roll in late. Okay, it's a lot of spots. So what's what will happen is um, you will just be inclined to just open up the laptop because you'll think we're not paying attention. Like, don't do that, and don't be on your phones. I think the the thing is. Uh, it's, it's a really interesting class, not because of, yeah, because of me, because the way I teach it is almost every day I invite you to be volunteers. Here, seats right here. I invite you to be volunteers and come down to the front and talk. So if it were just me, I would tell you, hey, man, you can keep your phones out, watch FIFA soccer, or football, or whatever you want to do, because I'm not that interesting. But your classmates are interesting, and so therefore, you got to just put your phones away. We're going to keep them away, all right? Uh, all right, man, enough of that. Okay, what else do we have? All right, so that's what I look like. I want to say a couple of things about me, so you know. That's what I looked like when I started teaching this class in 1991. Man. Uh, yeah, I know. You're thinking, I don't, I looked at some, you know. Can you believe it? Yeah, I, I was a hippie pothead. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, wh whatever. It's all good. Anyway, um, that was back in the day. And um, a couple things, right? Um, go, go to the next slide. Right before that, slide that's me and the the uh and the andes i i was doing i spent several years back and forth uh in to, in rural ecuador doing research and uh so that was i guess may of 1990 and uh what's interesting if you go back to that slide uh that so this is the western portrayal uh, of, G of Jesus, of Nazareth, kind of looks a lot like that. Long brown hair, white guy, you know, thin nose, kind of tall. Uh, always with kind of a British accent, which is weird. Every time Jesus is pr projected uh, in the media, it always has some weird British. It's never an American accent. So uh, it's, even if it's American television uh, or U.S. television, it's, always, it's never what he was, which is more of a, which is a brown guy. But we don't want to see Jesus as a guy that looks like, I don't know, an Arab dude. That, that, I don't know, in the West, that's like a... All right, but in any case, uh, let me not. <laughs> so, here we go back. I want, hey, can I just tell you something? So, when I was an undergrad, I, I just had, I was just going to go down a hole. I used to do stand-up comedy when I was an undergrad, when I was like in my early 20s. And uh, I, sometimes I just, I walk through that doorway, but almost every time I walk through the doorway, I say something offensive, and then I get in trouble. So if I let my comedic side come out, so I'm always holding back jokes. Like a, I always have a routine going in my head, but I, like don't, I don't do it, because I just, it just gets tiring being in trouble. So. Uh, getting my hand slapped or whatever by the authorities. And so uh, I, so sometimes you'll see me stumbling a little bit, or you'll hear me stumbling. And I'm, try, I'm like, 
starting and stopping because I'm tripping over myself in some way. But anyway, go, go to the next slide. Uh, so there, so when I was in Ecuador, and I looked like this, so I was in the, the rural areas. So if you see that the house over the, on the left in the shoulder, so that was in that house, and I didn't think of that until right now. I, uh, the, the, per, the people who lived in that house were, in, in Spanish we say campesinos, they were small farmers. And I was, I was sitting, sitting on the hillside, the hillside uh, somewhere, somewhere around, around here with the, um, a young man. He wasn't so young. He was in his 30s. But who we were sitting, watching, and in the sky was an airplane that was going over, right, and leaving contrails, you know. And the, in this guy, his name was Telmo. And Telmo said, ¿Qué es esto? Like, what is that? I'm like, dude, it's an airplane. And Telmo's like, yeah, well, well, wait, what? Okay, well, what it? What, so what? Like, ex explain it, right? And I'm like, damn, man. And Telmo had only left this valley like a couple times in his life, and that's only to go to a small, a small town, uh, a couple hills over, right? So I tell you that story because. My, the work I was doing, what I was doing in Ecuador was studying the Catholic Church and the, what the Catholic Church, what priests and nuns were doing to promote social and economic development with people who were really, pretty, really, really poor. Uh, and so I would follow the priests around and, you know, like wherever, up in the hill, you know, like this, right? And we'd and it'd just be observing and following what they're doing and getting a sense of it. But... In Catholicism, the, the idea in Christianity is that Jesus is coming again, right? He's going to come. And like this is going to, then God will return in the form of Jesus, the return of Jesus Christ. And this is the Christian ideology. Of, I mean, not all Christians think this or believe it, but, you know, most do. It's part of Christianity. And so people like Telmo, Remember, Telmo, que es esto, right? Have been hearing from priests their whole lives that Jesus is coming again. Now, in Ecuador, the, a lot of the more like progressive priests, kind of left progressive priests, were they would portray Jesus as a campesino because as someone who, you know, would look like uh, somebody like the people who lived in this area. But most often, Jesus was portrayed like, can you go back a slide? Like that. Okay? Okay. okay. All right. All right. So, so, I would go, I would go into, into villages, villages sometimes in these communities with the priests. And there were several times, you know, we sort of roll in, you know, on horseback or car or whatever. And people would say, Es él. Es él. Es Jesus. Like thinking that, is that I'm Jesus. Right, because I came in on the priest and they're on the on the on, in the community in their whole lives, the priest has been saying Jesus is coming again. That dude comes into the community, so people are like, oh damn, Padre Isito brought Jesus to the community, right? Is that him? Is that and like there's nothing more awesome than having people think that you are the return of the Messiah. Okay, let me just start right there. So that's like, if you want to understand, maybe you could score the winning touchdown in the Super Bowl or something, I don't know. Uh, but people thinking you're the Messiah, unless, you know, you've taken too much LSD and, you know, you've lost your mind or whatever, but thinking, or they have, but people thinking you're, you're the Messiah is, uh, dude, it's pretty awesome. All right, man. <laughs> so I just thought I'd tell you that story. All right, man, here's the next thing. Uh, all right, that's me with my dad. Um, I'm the, the one with the doll. Uh, what's important about this that I, I like to show this photo at the beginning of the semester is that um, I've been in iconoclast. I've been outside the box since I was a little kid. Like, so look, my parents are dressing me in pink. Now, pink used to be the masculine color back in the 19th century and very early part of the 20th century, but then it became a feminine color. 
right? And, uh, but, you know, I play with dolls. Um, I wore pink, you know. They were, my parents were cool with that. My dad was older. My mom was older. She was 45 when I was born. And uh, so uh, what, what, what's important for you to know is I'm not inside of any boxes. Like, that's, a, that's I've been outside of boxes since day one. And I teach this class, I, ta- I think, outside of boxes, right? I'm not in any boxes. And I live outside of boxes, and I, not entirely. I mean, look, I'm, I'm dressed pretty cons- traditionally, I guess, right? But, uh, but it's important because my ho- I realize at some point in time, after quite a number of, maybe my second decade of teaching, that I really have been... Uh, condition since I've been a little kid to not to think like a sociologist and to think outside of the the boxes of normality whatever those are right and so um, there are certain entrapments that, that we have in life right I'm, I'm, I'm an American I'm a white guy I'm uh, from the Midwest I don't know I'm mostly straight I mean I'm straight uh, I mean, I, for, for now, I'm straight, okay? Uh, but I'm married, and, you know, if my wife dies before me, then I'll probably be, I probably won't be with another woman, right? Because it's just a thing, man. You've been, I'm 63, it's a, you get to a certain age. It just would be, I just know a lot of men who I I'd, I'd probably would be with, right? So for right now, I'm straight. Okay, so I'm all good. Um, and I'm happy. Like, I mean, I'm not, it's not like I don't want to be with my wife. I mean, we have, I, we have a really lo- lovely relationship, right? So, nitty, right? <laughs> okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> so, uh, but in any case, yeah. So the entrapments, I don't know where I was. Uh, so they're entrapments, right? So I'm kind of inside, I'm, there are certain things I'm, I'm in, but, but I'm not at the same time. I'm, like, I'm really moving in a lot of directions all the time. Okay, so here, it's a miracle that curiosity survives, survives formal education. Um, what that means is that I have this idea that, first off, I, I was, when my dad was alive, uh, I, I was, a decent, I was a decent student. My dad was really into science and math and so on. And I was then really in, being pushed towards science and math. But my dad died when I was nine. And then once my dad died, I was on my own because my mom was busy working and working three jobs. And I just basically raised myself, which was pretty awesome. For me, it was awesome. And for other people, it wouldn't necessarily be awesome. But for me, it really was because I had the personality that really thrived. And I probably would have clashed with my dad in lots of ways because once I started to find my freedom. But the point being, I didn't take school seriously. Once he died, I was just, I did what I needed to do. And I liked reading. I would go to the library and I would bring home a stack of books. Like every, I could go every two weeks or sometimes every three weeks, I'd bring home a stack of books and I would just voraciously consume those books. And including I would take them to school and I'd read them at my desk, but I had no interest in doing homework, man. Just doing worthless shit homework that doesn't matter. If you think about all the time you've wasted in life, just copying stuff down from one thing to another, and it doesn't, it didn't matter. And you're starting to come become aware it didn't, doesn't matter. Like when you go to your class and, and I, you know, your professor puts up slides and then you write it down in your notebook, and then you memorize it for a quiz or an exam, and then, you know, you spit it back on the exam, and then you empty your brain, and then you go back to class and you start all over again, and none of it stays in your brain, and none of it will stay in your brain. I remember three things from my undergraduate education, three random factoids at this stage in my life, and that's, that's it. And so, for me, it's like, this formal education of just memorizing and emptying our brains out and memorizing more so we can get grades, so that we can jump through hoops, so that we can, I don't know, I don't know what it is, get a, get a job so that we can 
work and die. I, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, I just have this idea that I, I can't, I, I, I only survived education because I didn't do it well. And I didn't follow the rules. I just sat at my desk and read and I thought on my own. So by the time I got to high school, I discovered marijuana. And that was a whole different world. And that took me on a different kind of journey. And so, <laughs> yeah. I'll just leave it at that. So, uh, and, and then when I, when I started college, so I went to college, and college was inexpensive. I, st I started, I went, I could only get into the University of Toledo. It's the only place they, I, I, they basically let everybody in, so they let me in. I didn't, I didn't know what I wanted to do, um, but I, I didn't really want to go to college, but I did because, I don't know, I just did. And uh, I commuted. I was playing in a band. I was playing music, and I was working. And uh, I'm a drummer. And uh, so I started, and I, the first semester, I kind of did, I survived. I dropped one class, but I passed a couple others. And then after that, it was just downhill. I would start a semester with a full load, and then I would stop going to my classes, and I would get Ws, like withdrawals. And then I'd start another semester, and I'd stop going. I'd get Ws. But I could pay. I, I, in my job, my work in the summertime, I was a house painter. I could pay my entire year's tuition by working six weeks in the summertime. So it didn't really matter that I dropped out every quarter, right, that we were quarters, because it didn't really cost anything. It was irrelevant. But I did that my second year. The third year, I transferred to a two-year community college because I thought, well, listen, I'm never going to graduate college, but maybe I'll learn something here. So I would, took this two-year business management course, courses, because I was, I was a house painter and I was starting a company. And I thought, well, maybe it'll help me in my company. I found out pretty quickly that wasn't the case. And so I stopped going to my classes. But on my way to the last class, man, the last class, I'm walking. This is exactly how it was, man. I'm walking down to the class and I passed the library. And I went, ah, eh, fuck it. And I went into the library. And I started doing what I did at the library, which is like just roaming around looking at books because I just love books. And, and I found these, uh, these uh, journals and an article. And I found this article on prisons. It was like a social work article. And, I, and for the first time in my life, I went, I'm reading it, and I was like, damn, I, I would be really cool to be in a prison. I mean, working, not being in a prison. But, but that, well, that would be cool. It depends on the situation, right? So, uh, so I went to the to the phone, there was a phone on the wall, and I went and I picked it up and I talked to the operator and I said, hey, can I talk to the social work department? And, and I said, and I talked to some dude, I said, can I come over and uh, talk to you about social work degree? So he said, yeah, come over right now. So I, I went back to the main campus. I signed up for social work classes, um, but the, my first quarter back, so this, this would be in January of, two, of 1980, I took a sociology class, and, and then I got serious. Like, I quit my job, I quit everything, and I decided I was going to become a really a serious student. So uh, I got two C's and two D's. I worked my arse off, man. I got two C's and two D's. That's how bad of a student I was. Like, I, I, like, I didn't know how to study. I didn't know anything. But I was like, okay, that's cool, two C's and two D's. That's better than W's, right? Because C's earn degrees. You know what I mean? C's earn degrees. So... Uh, and I took a sociology class, and the sociology class was so fascinating that I just kind of switched over to sociology. And then that was it, and I never looked back. And that's how I got here. And, and I'm still love, I just love everything about thinking, but I don't like the busy work. Now, what's important for you to know is I also don't think that you should engage in busy work. Like, why do you want to write notes? Why do I want to give you information that, you know, you can get on your cell phone. You, any question that you would want to ask me about like, well, can you explain racism to me? Or can you explain how many, the different racial groups or whatever? I'm like, look it up on your phone, man. Don't ask me. Like, why would you ask me? And then take 
the word of just one human being, especially me, of all people, like, you don't want to ask me anything, look it up on your phone, Mr. Google knows a lot. So why would I do any of that in here? Why would you pay all the money that you're paying to have me go to my, go to Mr. Google and like find a bunch of shit, put it on a PowerPoint slide, and then come in here and read the PowerPoint slide and, and have you write notes down and then have you like spit it back on an exam and then get to the end of the semester and go, okay, I got my grade in social 19. It's like, why would you pay for it? I, I, I should be arrested if I did that. Like, that, that's criminal. So, like, why would you do that? And so you don't want to do that. And so I try to uh, do for you what I would want to have done for me if I was in this class. And that this is a class on race, culture, and ethnicity. I mean, both half in the United States and half globally. And let me tell you, what, there's nothing more fat, well, except everything, but race, culture, and ethnicity are so fascinating that why, why would you want to waste your time in a class just writing stuff down from a slide and memorizing it? No, you want to engage. And so that's why we work the class the way we do, okay? So you should thank me for that. Also, thank me for the fact that there are no books that you have to buy, which is awesome, too. And... Uh, <laughs> All right, man. All right. Uh, can we go to the next one? Let's see where we're at here. Damn. Okay, here's the thing. Uh, attendance is an assignment, meaning th you get three. There's 180 total points in the class. Three points are connected to your attendance in this room every single day. Three points. It's like over the course of the semester, that's 81 points. I don't know, what, who, math people, what's that, like 40% or something? 81 out of 180 is, what is that? 45%? Dude, I, I knew you were that guy. I could tell. All right, man. So for, it's like 45% just to come in here and sit back and have a thinking experience. Like, think. Like, how awesome is that? Not, I don't, trust me. It's awesome because I'm not going to say all that much, but you all will say a lot. So I know how to ask good questions to get you all to say some things, okay? So that means you come to class, and that means you never have to let us know when you're not going to be in class. It doesn't matter what happens in your life. If you miss class, we're not just going to give you three points. You have to earn those three points. So if you're not here, that means you have to write a class reflection assignment, and that's 900 words. And 900 words is a lot of words. It's not for me. I can write 900 words because I type really fast. And by now, I think relatively fast, so I can do that in about eight minutes. But for you all, it takes more time. So it's a lot easier to just come here, take the Canvas quiz at the beginning of class and at the end of class and be done. Okay? So that's what it is. Is that cool? All right, man. Next slide. Uh, read the syllabus. Uh, yeah, you got to read the syllabus. It's, I think it's 18 pages or something like that. And you take a syllabus quiz, which is worth 10 points, which is what? Five and a, dude, 10 points. Five and a half percent of the grade? Dude, see that? Man, you, I got you. All right. So the syllabus quiz. And you could take it five times. We want to get 10, 10 out of 10 points because we want you to, we want to know that you knew the answers to those 10 questions because it makes our lives much easier. And who is our? Our is, is all of us. Nish, you're going to meet all these folks, by the way. Nish, Nitty, uh, Leah, and Julie, who is going to hop on the screen uh, right now. And, uh, and go to the next slide first off, and then you can bring Julie in. But uh, by the way, all communication goes to the staff at social19.org, uh, all of it. Like you, you, any emails that you have goes there, okay? Anything at all. You never, never use camp, whatever. Is, is she, is Julia? And go to the next slide. Okay. Hola, Julie. Hey. Oh, yeah, espera. No, no, no te veo. Ahí está. Hola, ¿qué tal? Hola. 
¿Cómo están? Bien, bien. Oye, Julie, wait, Julie, why are we speaking in Spanish? Where are you? Because I'm in Colombia and I speak Spanish most of the time with you, which is pretty good for me. Yeah. So, Julie, it's spelled with a Julie, why is your name spelled with a Y? I don't know. That's uh, my dad's crazy idea or mom's. I don't know. But yeah, it's, it's, it's just don't say Yuli, say Julie, like, a G, like with the G. The J. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the a student before class asked about Yuli, and I said, <laughs> I just, yeah, I said, no, it's Julie. Okay. All right. So listen, man, what do you need to tell people? What do they need to know? Well, um, I think you already did it some talking about the syllabus, but I think um, they need to know that I'm here to help you guys with anything you need related to class. Like if, if you have questions about grades, assignments, attendance, anything you need. But if that question can be resolved reading the syllabus, the first thing I will do is just send you to read the syllabus. So please save time, read the syllabus, and then come back to me with any questions you have. I think that's that's kind of the key of how to get an A in this class. It's Just they, how, can you explain how easy the class is if you do what you're supposed to do? How easy? It's pretty easy because I think most of the people get an A in this class is if they just attend class, uh, read the materials, the videos on the readings, and take your world in conversation dialogues, you will know more about it. Uh, this is a pretty cool assignment as well that is, is really good for you. I think like just activating your brain and thinking and just following what you need to do in that map called syllabus. It's such like an easy thing and makes our lives easier as yeah. well. Yeah, like we want, we in, in an ideal world, every single one of you, we get an A. Because that would mean every single one of you was doing what you were supposed to, not supposed to, listen, C's earn degrees, man. So I don't get C's. I don't care. But if you get C's, don't come and complain to us. Just get a C and roll with it, right? But in an ideal world, you would all just do what you know what's going on and you would do it and then it would be awesome. And hey, Julie, so people are going to send use the Canvas mail system, right? Can you oh. <laughs> castigar el ahora? Yeah. <laughs> so if you send us an email using the Canvas system or if you email some other members of the team uh, asking something else about like the class, um, you really won't get a faster response or either, even don't get a faster re response. I will say that if you email some, you will get a response. So you better want to use the staff email to reach out to anything you need about the class. But, but some people are going to think that, but my issue is so important, I have to email, send an email directly to Sam. And why is that a bad idea? Because you won't respond unless I let you know that you need to respond. So the first, the easier way is just to write to, to the staff email. And I'm, I will make sure Sam get the, the email, even if it's like 2 a.m. in the morning, I will do it. But if you write directly to him, I won't recommend that if you want a faster response. Yeah, it, it's not because I'm mean, really. <laughs> I love students and it's just that I get, I don't know, I get a hundred plus emails every day. I get so many emails, I can't keep up with them. But Julie will ping, if you got something really, really important, trust me, Julie will ping me Anything that comes in from Julie, even if it's at two in the morning, I hear it, I wake up, and I respond. So, like, she will make sure I respond, okay? So, and if it's sensitive, it's okay. Julie and I, we're, team, we're a team. We're a team. Like, there's nothing that's so sensitive that the two of us can't know, okay? It stays between us, okay? So, keep that in mind. All right, uh, Julie. I think that's it. I think we just wanted to make sure they saw you. You're a real person. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to chat, chat GPT or anything generator. I'm a person. All right. Thanks, man. Okay. Thank you. Enjoy. Okay. Okay. Bye. Okay. Ciao. Ciao. All right. Uh, okay. Is that cool? Any questions about that, about her, about where we're at? So we're a team.
like Julie and I. And, and it's, it's awesome working with her. First off, because I, I, my wife and I have an apartment in Colombia, in Bogota, that, and that's where we meet. We had a project in Bogota, and uh, that's where we met Julie. And for me, Julie and I just, we just can, I, I enjoy speaking Spanish, so we speak in Spanish. Oh, yeah, Did, do you have the stream going? Can you just put it up for a second? So go, you can put us to that next so, so we do stream in here, okay? Um, and uh, so we're streaming now. We have seven cameras in the room. Um, the stream is about 20 seconds behind the actual class. So there's, that's the stream, but that was 20 seconds ago. Uh, so, um, and you'll see us switching cameras. We have seven cameras. We're going in different directions. So... Uh, um, Nish, are we switching cameras back there? We're on the same. Do really? <laughs> All right. All right, man. But is it going? It's going okay? The stream's okay? All right, man. All right, good. Whew. All right. And people uh, watch the stream. You know, people are on from uh, different parts of the world. I mean, people watch, so it's really fun. So we will engage people who are watching the stream. But what's important for you to know is that we're, we're streaming. If you don't want to be on the stream, uh, come talk to us. If you never want to be on camera at all, come talk to us, and we'll tell you where to sit in the classroom, okay, so that you won't be on the camera, all right? Um, how's that? Anyway, that's how you get to the stream. So if you know anyone that wants to watch, if your parents, sometimes parents, grandparents want to watch, parents want to watch and check your attendance, make sure you're showing up every day, that kind of thing. All right. Are we good? Uh, all right, ma'am. Let's do this. Um, so first off, can you, can they, why don't the two, can the two of you just, in, can you introduce yourselves really fast? Can you get, can you get, hey, uh, hey, news, can you jump on, or why don't, Nish, why don't you just come over here? Why don't you guys come over here really fast? It'll be easier. Just stay on green. Um, hi, everybody. Um, I'm Darnisha. Sam calls me Nish. Everyone calls me Nish. Um, I'm in charge of the live stream that you just saw and all the camera operators and TAs that are around the room. So if there's ever a question, a problem, and Sam is in, is like in a cloud of other students, you can probably come find me, and I'll tell you the better person to go to to get your question answered. Um, I've been running the stream for a while now. Um, Dude, when were you in the class? And like the I took, like I was an actual student in 119 in tw the fall of 2017. Um, and then I was on the stream team the spring of 2018. I've been doing this ever since. Remember when we did the stream, the skin whitening thing with you? Oh. <laughs> we had skin whitening cream. And so I, we needed, I, we, we wanted a volunteer of someone who would put the skin whitening cream on, on them every day for the whole semester. And uh, it, did, it never did anything. Yeah, um, I put it like on the inside of my arm, like right about here in like a little like heart design. And it made my skin a little bit darker right there. So it didn't do anything oh, really? for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was reverse skin whitening cream. Man. It's just proof that I didn't need it. <laughs> but, That's awesome. Yeah. Um, if By you way, ever have a question, you, you can usually just ask me, um, which some notes on Wait, class. Niche. Yes. If you're ever a volunteer, make sure that you're holding the microphone directly in front of your mouth so that people can hear you. <laughs> um, if you come in late, obviously come down to the front, find a seat. If there is a white board on the seat like this, you cannot sit there because you'll be in a camera's way. Um, other than that, am I forgetting that's anything? That's it, man. Dude. Thanks. Keep rocking and rolling. Nitty? Yeah. This is your last semester, this right? Is, yeah, this is my last semester here. Um, my name's Nidhi, and I'm a senior majoring in computer science. And uh, I've worked for Sam for like three and a half years. I took this class my <laughs> freshman year, first semester. And you're still sane. And I'm still sane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to miss working for this class. Yeah, but, it's fun. Yeah. And you do a so killer fun. job up here. Yeah. Running it. So These I'm, I, yeah, I kind of run the podium and uh, I deal with like volunteer stuff and. Um, and you'll meet class, Leah too. Logistics. Leah is uh, the other, the kind of production manager who mm -hmm. will be here on Thursday. Dude, so thanks, man. Yeah. 
Thanks for rocking and rolling. Yeah, of course. All right. Um, all right, so let's do this. Let's do what we do. Um, let's just, let's do a case study, okay? Now, the way this works is, uh, can you, um, do we have the volunteer? Okay, yeah, don't put it up yet. Okay, here's how this works. Um, we have a, a volunteer form that you, uh, if, you got, if you read that email that I had, that I sent out yesterday, but y'all y'all have it. It's on the syllabus, it's on Canvas, it's on the website, it's everywhere. You, you apply to be a volunteer in here. And if you volunteer, what happens is, on the day of the class, somebody reaches out to you via text message and says, hey, can, do you want to volunteer today? And we never know what the class is going to be about until the day of the class, because it kind of depends on what's going on in the news and, like, you know, what, 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 we, what we sort of just feel like and inspired to do and that sort of thing. And then you can decide whether you want to volunteer. But uh, what I will say is if you apply to volunteer, you know, I mean, no, that's all, okay? Um, if you... Uh, the thing you need to know about volunteering is it's, this is not gotcha, a gotcha world. There, there, there's the last thing in the world that we ever want to have happen is for someone to volunteer and then embarrass themselves in some way. Like that's the worst possible thing because it's bad because then I, I get called out because no matter what happens, I would be blamed for that. Like, oh yeah, you like made that student whatever, right? It's like, nah, I don't want to do that. So we don't have really, uh, okay, maybe gonna ask you to put, okay, okay. Maybe, uh, so, so it's, we're not trying to root out the racists or the homophobes or the sexists or whatever the case is, I don't know. Like we're not doing that here. It's, you know, we're having thoughtful conversations, okay? So if you volunteer, just know it will be something that will be, I don't know, well, well you can figure it out, right? We'll, we're, so let's, let's, let's do one today. So what will happen is you'll get, we'll, we'll, uh, you'll hear from us and uh, the day of the class and then we'll go for it, okay? And then you can decide and then you come in early and you see Leah in the front. We give you a name tag and then you sit in the front and then, you know, we'll, we'll, you'll come up one at a time or two or three at a time. All right. But right now we don't have any volunteers, but we're going to do a case study. So here's what I would like to invite a couple people who would like to, who could volunteer for us, right? Um, and you actually don't have to speak a lot. You don't have to speak on the microphone at all, really. So someone who's a native Mandarin speaker and someone who's a native Korean speaker. So, dude, Korean, right? Wait, Mandarin or Korean? Uh, hey, by the way, uh, I'm also, because I was a drummer for my life, I have terrible tinnitus and I have, uh, and uh, my hearing's bad, it's tough, man. Wait, Korean or? Korean, you want to you volunteer? Yeah, right now. Okay, someone who's a, you want to go for it? This is how you rock. Native Mandarin speaker. Who, who would like to volunteer? Wait, where at? Dude, come on down, man. All right. All right, man. Awesome. And, <laughs> dude, see that? Yo, in. wait, hang on. You, they haven't even done anything yet, and you're already applauding for them. I think, I've, dude, I've done a lot of things already, and nobody applauded for me. So, all right, so hang on. Uh, all right, there we go. Thank you, thank you. All right, so um, now we need just a, just a, an average, an, how about an, an, uh, an, an, just an average white guy? Just for, <laughs> not, it doesn't have to be a white guy, just an American, actually. It doesn't have to be a white guy. Black, brown, whatever the case is. Anybody? Who, who else wants to volunteer? Dude, do you want to volunteer? You're on, man. All right. And then some, uh, someone, who's, uh, who's an Ara someone who's Arab or speaks Arabic. Yeah. Any, someone who speaks Arabic. You speak Arabic, right? Of course you do. Do you want to volunteer? How did I know she spoke Arabic? 
Uh, right here. No, someone who speaks Arabic. Dude, do you get? You want to volunteer? Who wants? To, no, this is an easy one, actually. No, you, you're sick. All right. Somebody else. No, someone who speaks Arabic. Farsi? Eh, no. Okay, dude. Come on. Ah, oh, the dude. All right, man. Okay. Now. Okay, so let's do this first off. Here, you can come. I'll stand right here in a line. Uh, dude, not the hair. Nice hair, dude. Damn. Where'd you get that hair? Yeah? Is that your, your mom's side or your dad's side? My mom's side. Your mom's side? Dude, all right, well, here, wait, I should give you the, all right, mom. Uh, all right, so introduce yourself. Where are you from? Hi, I'm Mina. I'm from Egypt. Mina from Egypt. Oh, Egyptian Arabic, even better. Okay, all right, cool, man. Mina? Yeah. Okay, okay go, go ahead, pass it down. Um, hi, I'm Omar, and I'm from New York. Omar from New York. What's your ancestry? Uh, my mom's Peruvian, my dad's Turkish. Oh, very cool. Oh, dude, awesome, man. Okay. Uh. Hi. Um, I don't know if you guys. Wait, is it my? Hello. Yep. Okay. Hi, I'm Samantha. I my Korean name is Soyoung, but I usually go by Samantha, and I'm from South Korea. Where are you from in South Korea? Um, Seoul. S Seoul. All right. <laughs> so my name is Mu Chang, and I go by MC. And apparently, I'm from China. Dude, MC, man. Yeah. Wait, so you speak Mandarin or? Mandarin. I assume Mandarin. I okay. can't speak Cantonese. It's okay, yeah. All right. All right, so listen, man. Here's what you have to do. You all are going to go out in the hallway, and the two of you are going to learn to say some things. In... Do you have your phone with you? Do you have your phone with you? Okay. You're going you're gonna to have to say three phrases in both Mandarin and Korean. Okay? They're going to teach you how to say them. Okay? And, th and these are the... These are the three phrases. And what you want to do is, you want to probably do, uh, so we're going to just go on with class while you guys are busy. And we, you probably want to do it phonetically, like use your phone and, you know, you can, you don't have to memorize them because that's just not going to be possible, but you can do it phonetically. You write them in a way. Do you speak Spanish, bro? Okay. Well, you could do it however you want to do it. So, uh, so that you can say them so they, the things sound exactly like they're going to teach you how they sound. All right? Are we cool? You got, you, got, you got that? You think you can do it? You think you can teach them to do this? All right, man. Okay. All right, Nisha will take you out in the hallway. And you guys just work on it out there. So, again, you too. You're going to have to do it, like, phonetically, right? You got to write it in a way, like, some weird, write it however you need to write it to make the sound exactly like they're going to, you need to make the sound. Does that make sense? All right, man. All right. So now... Um, so now we need, uh, <laughs> we're going to, we'll get a couple minutes of them. All right, so here's, here's what we need. Uh, well, I think now two more, three more volunteers, right? Uh, another Korean speaker and another Mandarin speaker. So you got to, if you were thinking like, oh, I should have done this, like now you get a chance. Wait, Korean, you're Korean, right? You want to, do you want to volunteer? All right, come on, man. And then a Mandarin speaker. Who speaks, who's going to, who wants, who speaks Mandarin? Dude. Okay, you're, come on, yeah. Hey, when, all right, awesome. Oh, man, you a rock. All right. You can have a seat up here. And then just somebody else. Anybody else, man? Dude, how about you? You want to volunteer? How about someone, who else, who wants to volunteer? Bro, you want to volunteer? Wait, actually, actually, wait, hang on. Dude, you want to volunteer? How about you, right here? I'm just going to pick him. I'll pick you on a different day. Make sure you... All right. Um, yeah, we need... He, if he can have the third one. Hey, make sure people get those, by the way. Um, all right. So... Um, you want What's up, man, by the way? Thanks, Thanks for volunteering. Man. Thanks, man. Thanks. Thanks. You, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Uh, so I'm Alex, and I'm from Taiwan. 
Alex from Taiwan. Okay. Wait, do you speak Cantonese or Mandarin? I speak Mandarin and Taiwanese a bit. And Taiwanese? Wait, so, so indigenous Taiwanese. What's Taiwanese sound like? Yeah, yeah, say, uh, wait, do, can people who speak Mandarin understand Taiwanese? Or, or, or more Cantonese? Neither, I believe. Really, neither? Yeah. Say, uh, say, um, wait, who speaks Mandarin? We, now we need another Mandarin speaker. You don't have to come up. Just like who speaks man, dude, you fluent? All right, dude. What's your name? Patrick. All right. Man. Say, uh, yeah. Taiwanese sounds really different than Mandarin in Taiwanese in your in native language. Could you try something else? Okay, something. Yeah, right. I understand it, but like. Okay, yeah, how about this? Uh, I uh, <laughs> wait. Can we can we get wait? You are Taiwanese? Uh, Thai, dude, are you Chinese? Do you mind if I, dude? Say, uh, Taiwan is its own nation. <laughs> all right, all right. Say this then. Say Taiwan. Wait. <laughs> Say Taiwan <laughs> is uh, uh Taiwan is an awesome place to live. Hold the mic close too. Taiwan is a very good I kind of forgot. I, I kind of forgot how place. You didn't get any of that? Dude, say, so, say any. What can you, what can you, what do you want to say? Just start saying anything. Li Jia Babwe. Do you know that? What's that? Sounds like Cantonese. Yeah, it sounds like Cantonese to you. Say something else. Say your full name. What do you mean? And that's how you would say it in, uh, that's in Taiwanese. Is that how you would say it in Mandarin? Say it in Mandarin. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, hang on. Do, do that again. Say it in Taiwanese. Say it in Taiwanese first, and then say it in Mandarin, your name. What do you Uh, Oh, damn, dog. That's really different. Did that sound different to you? Did that sound different to you? You understand the Mandarin, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. all right, man. So, so one of those names, names is your name, but what, what do you go by, Patrick? Here? Here? I go by Alex. Oh, oh, Alex, all right, all right. Alex, oh, the other guy was Patrick, I don't know. Okay, okay. All, right, all right, man. Alex. How'd you pick Alex, by the way? Well, talk in the microphone. Oh, um, so. Like, how'd you get Alex? I forgot, I think someone just gave, just called me, Alexander, then I just call myself Alex. Yeah? I've always wanted to give someone a name, so. All right, bro, what's, okay, cool, thanks, man. Bro, what's your name? My name's Henry. Henry? Yes. Dude, Henry. You look like a Henry, you know what I mean? With a turtleneck, you got the whole thing going. What, where are you from? I'm from Pittsburgh. From Pittsburgh? Yeah? Yeah, right, okay. And uh, what year are you? I'm a sophomore. Yeah, what do you study? Finance. Finance? All right, man. Okay, thanks, bro. Um, I'm Stella. <laughs> Stella? Yeah. What's your Korean name? It's Chaeyoung. Chaeyoung? Yeah. And where did you uh, get, st from, who named you Stella? Where'd you get Stella? Well, it was from the English teacher in Korea. He was just like one of those, just one day, they were like, let me give you an English name. I was like, okay. Like, so you didn't have a name before he gave I it to you? I was just dying. But like, he was like, let's just like make up an like, English name for you. Which and is then, not, yeah, which is pretty common, yeah. right? <laughs> the reason it's common, because wait, say your full, say your full name. Yeah, yeah your Korean. full Korean name. Oh Cha Young. Oh Cha Young. Cha Young. Yeah, it's O as in like O. Oh Cha Cha Young. Cha Young. J A Y O U N G. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's, it's like, like a lot of names. Like, like you get tired of people butchering your name, and it's also right. People yeah, get tired of. Yeah, they would say J Young a lot. So. J Young. Yeah. yeah. Like, like bro, Alex, your name. I mean, wait, say it in Mandarin again. 
Zhang Youming. Yeah, so Alex, dude, I'm just gonna call you Alex, because I can try calling you by by your Chinese name, but it's just like I'm gonna just butcher it every time. Like, so for me, wait, say my name, bro. S A M. Sam, Sam, right? Sorry. Wait, say it again. Sam. Sam. No, it's Sam. Sam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 dude, say my name. Sam. Sam. Ah, oh, okay, you got. The, yeah. No, the reason I say that is because um, we have this, I don't want to play into this trope of like English speakers or Americans or whatever, like we can't pronounce other names. It's like everyone struggles with names. I mean, that's the nature of it. Like, and that's what's cool. And that's the re one of the reasons we're just starting out with this case study is just to break down some barriers. You know what I mean? And so um, like people rarely pronounce my name the way I pronounce it growing up in the Midwest, right? which is Sam, and but people, some, or some, or some, or something, right? But it's never, I don't, which is fine. I don't mind. You can call me anything you want. It doesn't really matter, but the point being, like, it's a very simple name, S-A-M, and people don't necessarily get it right. Whatever right it, there is no right, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, all right, yeah, you can do that. Um, hey, so, um, bro, let me ask you a question. What do you know about... Koreans and Chinese? Not too much. I mean, I don't really spend too much time around Koreans or Chinese people, so. But, um, I don't know. I know uh, that's uh, as much as I'll say. Well, say something. Tell us, give us something that you know. Well, to be I. true. Okay. I guess one you thing that's. One, too, by the way. Pardon? No, go ahead. Go ahead. I guess, um, a Chinese, a Chinese people. I think you know what I'm going to say. Chinese people are pretty good at math, generally. They're pretty good at Dude, math. That guy's pretty good at math. Yeah? Pretty good at math. Yeah. Bro, Alex, is that true? Yeah, and that's definitely true. Korean people make good food as well. I'll Korean people make good food, but Koreans are... are do, wait, are there any Chinese in here who are bad at math? I mean, there's got to be. Is there anybody who's bad at math? Dude, seriously? There's one, by the way, all right? Sorry, man. This, this is a, that's the one guy at Penn State. He's like an art history major because he flunked out of base. All right, are you the only one in class you're bad at math? Anyone, anyone else? Dude. All right, dude, that guy too. All right, anyway, that's okay though, that's good. It's a, it's a general, it tends to be more true than less true. Would you say that's true about Koreans? Um, yeah, generally, they make a whole trend out of it like making new recipes and all that. Oh, about food. Oh, yeah. you're back in food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're going to do some Korean food stuff in here, by the way. Uh, um, what do you know about Korea besides food? Um, I don't know. I watch, uh, I watch a bit of soccer, so I know that uh, Seon Hyo Ming. That's like, that's, whenever, I, whenever I hear Korea, that's pretty much like what I'll think about usually. And other than that, I know, I mean, um, Seoul is a pretty cool city. That's so I'd say that's pretty much all I know about Korea. I don't know yeah. too much. Dude, okay, man. What What did you? Um, let me ask you this question. Do, do you have any? You don't have any Korean or Chinese friends? Yeah. No. Yeah. What do you think is a big uh, one of the biggest misconceptions about Korea? They have, how long have you been here in the U.S.? Um. Uh, well, I was here since 13 years old. Oh, 13 years old. Yeah. Ah, that's why you said my, my name in the way that you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam. I grew up in Oklahoma. In Oklahoma? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, do you have a southern accent? Can you do a southern accent? <laughs> um, hey, y'all. Like, I don't know. Yeah, like, hey, <laughs> that was good. I mean, a root beer. <laughs> root beer. <laughs> All right, I like that. Um, what do you think one of the, is one of the biggest misconceptions of, about Korea um, that you've heard while here? That everyone in Korea is like, you know, K-pop level hot, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> or like, I don't know, like he just said about like math, like I'm pretty dog shit at math too, so. <laughs> yeah, Koreans are, Koreans really match Chinese and with math. Yeah, okay. What do you think is one of the a big misconception about China. Where are you from in China, by the way? I'm from Taiwan. Oh, Taiwan. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, if you could live in, <laughs> dude, if you could live in China, where would you want to live? All right, Taiwan. Wait, wait, I thought Taiwan and China were the same place, by the way. Sorry. All right. Just, sorry about that. Dude, did I do all right there? I'm trying to, all right. Dude, where, where, where are you, are you from Taipei? Uh, yeah, my family used to live in Taichung, but we moved to, we moved to Taipei a few What's years the, ago. What is the coolest thing about living in Taipei? The food. The food? So much better than America. Dude. So now you gotta like move forward. Yeah. Any other Taiwanese here in class? Any other Taiwanese in class? All right. Anyone been to Taiwan? Yeah. Dude. Would you agree? Food's killer? Yeah. Where are you from? Where's your ancestry from? Oh, dude. Awesome, man. Okay. Well, you, got, you have one fan up here. So food. Any other, any misconceptions about Taiwan, Anything. other than <laughs> that, we have small eyes, probably. Do you have small eyes? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? What is that misconception, by the way, uh, bro? Have you, have you thought about that? Yes. Oh, you have? <laughs> hey, Dude. everyone has. What's, what do you mean when you think a Taiwanese well, have? Hang on, hang on, hang on. We're, we're we're working something out here, like, dude. When you say that. First off, take your glasses off. Can you get a close-up? <laughs> we're going we're gonna to test this out. I don't think your eyes are that small. Wait. 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 Hey, Junho, can, you, can we fix the... We need a little... We need it to be brighter. All right, bro, hang on. Damn. Hey, Wesley. Oh, Wesley's going to fix it. Hang on. We've got to fix the camera. Bro, when you say Ty Taiwanese... Let's say Taiwanese, but Taiwanese, East, Southeast Asian, right? East Asian, not Southeast Asian, East Asians have small eyes. What are you, what are you talking about? I say, I say, because you asked me if I thought about that. That's just a general stereotype of Asian. No, 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 I got you. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, I'm not thinking, you're not, well, this is, by the way, people, this is one of those moments when like Henry would be like, oh my God, Henry's so racist. It's like that, I wouldn't have asked him that question. I, I knew what he meant, and we're talking here. So that was, that was an example of me not doing a gotcha moment with Henry. Okay, is that cool? You, did, you, you felt that, right? Yeah, you're fine. I would never do that. All right, so listen, man. Um, so when you say small, what do you mean small? Like, like smaller in the socket or smaller in, like, what do you mean small? I don't know. I think it's just a general misconception that, uh, Chinese people, Taiwanese people have small eyes. Yeah. All right. Stella. Yeah. Is that a misconception? Or is that a conception? Oh, it used to be back in the day, I think. But what do you think? What do you mean when people say small? What do they mean small? I think it's more like kind of like the eyelids are more like closer and like yeah. they're more like, I don't know, like spread sideway or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, so like listen, if you have if you compare the skull of of uh Alex and Henry, the skull, the so their eye sockets are the same. Like their their eyeballs are the same. It's just that, you know, there's an eye fold in the eye that can pull come down for East Asians a little bit more. And it's the it's like the, the the epicanthic eye fold. We'll talk about it later in class, but it's just that little flap right here in the corner of the eye, this just kind of pulls the upper lid down a little bit. So it means there's a, it's like a little bit more narrow in that way as opposed to being really wide. So, um, yeah, so that's what it is. So when you say small, like, that's, that's what's really important. Small eyes, because when I think eyes, I think of the eyeball and the eye socket. This, this is just the skin around the eyes. And so, all right, so listen. So here, here's what we're going to do. So you guys... Uh, can you just come stand over here for a second? And oh wait, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need two of these. So you can hold on. To, you can guys face this way. All right, can you like just come over here a little bit? All right, man. Uh, you two, right here. All right. So now, um, bro, they're each gonna they're gonna say they're gonna say what they're supposed to say your job is to see how good they are who does a better job at speaking either korean or mandarin and your job when they we're going to start with omar and omar is going to say something don't say whether you're going to say it in korean or mandarin okay you're just going to say 
Say one first, and then the other second. All right? And then you have to decide, is he speaking Korean, or is he speaking Mandarin? Okay? So I choose one. No, we'll do the first one, and then do the second one. Come on, bro. You got this, man. Ano ho zayo. Taja ho. Okay. The whole thing? Yeah, I just said both. That was it? Yeah. Wait, you're supposed to teach them three things. Oh, you did them all? Say it again. Ana hazayo. Taja ho. Okay, do the next one now. Tonin Omar Emenda. Wosher Omar. Dude. With the first one, was it Korean or Mandarin? First one was Korean, uh-huh, and the second one was Mandarin. Okay? All right, dude. You do, do, hang on. Don't do it, not necessarily do Korean the Mandarin. You can, but you may not, okay? All right. Okay, bro, listen up. Okay. Mohaseyo. Niminza mia. Okay, do the next one. Like yeah, do the... That was, yeah, I did one. I did that first one. I did that one after. Oh, oh yeah? yeah? That was everything? Yeah. We, okay, do the first one again. Mohaseyo. Second one? Niminza mia. Is the first one Korean or... I think the first one's Korean. All right, man. Dude, did you understand anything? Did the two of you understand anything that either of them said? What, what, did, it, what, what, what did they say in... In Mandarin, what did they say in Mandarin? Uh, one of them said, hi everyone, my name's Omar. The other, I did not understand. <laughs> Wait, did you also teach him to say, how are you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Which one is that the last one? one? Okay. okay. Yeah, I thought, I thought that. Do I, do I say it again? Yeah, do that one. Do you want him to do both? Yeah, yeah, do that one. All right. Do the last one. Oh, Kikumer Kikume Lider Baiju. That's one. And do the other one. And then the other one. Soju Hanjan Tuseyo. Dude, what did he say? I heard Soju. <laughs> the first, you didn't hear any Mandarin there? <laughs> Do the Mandarin one again. The Mandarin one again, I got you. Ke la de baju. Ke kumen la de baju? Did you understand it? <laughs> Did I say it wrong? Dude, don't hang on, bro. Don't let I keep saying it. they didn't understand a damn thing you said. But don't let that discourage you, right? Remember how difficult Arabic is, right? Do the Korean. Do the Korean one. Soju Hanjan Tuseyo. What do you say? Wait, can you give her the mic? What do you say? Can I get a glass of soju? Ah, <laughs> dude, awesome, man. All right, say. Can you say that one? The soju one, yeah. Soju Hanjun Tseyo. Yeah, yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. So if he went into if he went into a restaurant or a bar in Korea, they'd know what he was saying. Yeah, I think they will understand. Yeah. Dude, do the do the Mandarin one. Come on, man. You gotta hold it. No, Omar, do the do the Mandarin one. That's MC here. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Did you understand, bro? What's that? Did he say what? He said baijiu. That's white wine. Yeah. Yeah, it's like... It. Is that what it's supposed to say? Baijiu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's baijiu. So you understood that? I heard baijiu. Uh, that's all? You heard baijiu? What's the second one, man? Kekumer lider. And then baijiu. Kekumer lider baijiu. Yeah. 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 Damn, dude. All right. Awesome, man. All right. Do you have another thing to say in Korean? What? Do you have anything else? Uh, which one's Korean? Which one's the top one, right? This one? Do I say it right now? Or like, you can Am I supposed to say more? Wahase Listen, yo, man. You got yeah. Wahase yo, Omar. Yeah. Wahase yo. Mohase yo. Dude, first off, uh, I have a quick announcement to make. Dude, first off, can we give it up for these folks, man? Dude, you killed it. Yeah. Dude, you killed it, man. Hey, make sure you see Nitty right after class. 
Um, wait, I, got, I just have two quick announcements. You can stay up here. There's, um, this, there's a class on Korea, still has seats in it. If you're interested, come see me right after class. The next one, there's also a class on Native American culture and thinking that still has seats in it. Doesn't meet for two weeks. And, I, and I'm teaching a study abroad class in Korea, but I'll talk about it next class. All right, y'all, thanks for coming. We'll see you on, um, we will see you on, uh, on Thursday. Yo, yeah, yeah, just go see them really fast. You need to scan this with your phone so I can get you points for volunteering today.